Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Courtney and I'm a real estate agent in the state of Connecticut. If you're into all things real estate, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss any new videos from me. And today I'm gonna get right into things you need to do right now if you're a new agent. I think a lot of people get into real estate and they're like, okay, I passed the test, I did all the stuff, now what do I do? And this could be especially hard if you have joined a brokerage where you don't really have any guidance on what to do next or what to do first to get your business going, try to get, you know, some leads and things like that. But I'm here to share with you what I think that you should do for a brand new agent and the things that you have to do to become successful. And that's yeah, just from my experience and what I've been told. So I hope that you find these things helpful. So the first thing that I would do as a new agent is to let everyone know you are an agent. I mean, everyone, everyone. So you're gonna send a letter out to your entire sphere. So these are people like you would send a Christmas card out to. So you're gonna send a letter, hey, you have a friend in the business, you, I just started real estate, and if you or anyone you know has any real estate needs, I'd love to help, whether you have any questions, wanna know how much your house is worth, or you think you might be in the market to buy a new house or know someone that does, then definitely give me a call. So you definitely want everyone to know. That's with mailings. You want to go on social media and let people on Facebook know, Instagram know. I don't wanna broadcast it to everyone. And also, you know, when you go to restaurants, maybe you tell people, hey, I'm an agent, or get into a conversation that brings up, hey, what do you do? And then, you know, they're gonna ask you, what do you do? And you're gonna say, an a real estate agent. So bring these conversations up wherever you go. If you see someone that, that you haven't seen for a while, bring up a conversation. A lot of people talk about what they do for work and what they're doing now. And if you're catching up with someone, definitely mention what you do as well. So I think it's just about, starting conversations with people. And if you're not in a real estate setting at like your kid's football game or a sibling's football game, no matter how old you are, wherever you are, you know, try to get a conversation in about real estate. Maybe not say like, hey, I'm a real estate agent and hand out cards and just be like that, like specific and kind of that upfront and abrupt, but maybe try to integrate it into the conversation and kind of have it come into the conversation effortlessly. Like you're not trying to give them a sales pitch or something like that, but it, that it comes in to the conversation with ease and like it was supposed to be brought up or something like that. So definitely let everyone know that you are a real estate agent um, in any way that you find fits, kind of fit into a conversation. So the second thing is to find a mentor. So this kind of can vary depending on what brokerage you're in. Um, if you get mentors, um, assigned to you or you could reach out to someone in your brokerage but I would just say find someone that you look up to someone that is doing really great and you think that they have great things to share with you um, just tag along with them or you know watch YouTube videos like this and you know find a youtuber that you really like and kind of see what they're doing and what they do in the daily basis but I think this really works best if you have someone maybe in your brokerage that's willing to have you tag along, um, see what you do on a daily basis, kind of pick their brain a little bit, just to have someone to look up to and to answer any questions that you may have, because trust me, there's gonna be a lot of questions that you have. Even I have questions a year in of things that I haven't seen before. So definitely would try to find someone who you can men that can mentor you. And even if it's not official, just kind of go with them and ask some questions, um, things like that. So I would definitely try to, identify someone who could be your mentor and kind of tag along with them. And I think that'd be very helpful and everyone does things differently. So if you want to tag along with a couple people, maybe you could see different strategies on how to do things and kind of pick different people's brains so that you can see like their methods and methodologies around things and how they run their business. Cause then, you know, you might like someone's over another or maybe one person's style isn't exactly the same as yours or doesn't kind of mesh with yours. So. Definitely find a mentor, someone to shadow, something like that. All right, the third thing is to meet with an accountant. Now, why this is important is because you're gonna have to pay your quarterly taxes, you're gonna have to 
have a budget and be on top of your money and your finances. And starting that off right off the bat is really, really smart. Like any other job that takes out state, federal taxes, all these different um, social security, things like that. You don't really have to you know, think about, okay, well, the money that's coming to me is not really mine. I have to take some out, put it aside, pay it. But in real estate, you know, you're getting this big lump, lump sum of cash. But you gotta look at that and you gotta think to yourself, okay, well, this is a nice load of cash, but it's not all mine. I have to take a certain percentage of that money and put it away. And then every quarter, so four times a year, this is what they suggest you do if you talk to your accountant, I'm sure they will too, but you're supposed to pay a certain amount every quarter, a percentage of what you make. So at the end of the year, you're not scrambling around and trying to do something for the entire year but you're going to have to put those, that money aside because you're not going to be want, wanting to get you know, to the end of the year and realizing you have like $20,000 in taxes to pay and you didn't put any money aside and you're like, wow, I feel like I didn't make a dang thing. Don't be in that position. I know people who have been in that position. It's not a good feeling. So definitely talk to an accountant about taxes, but also how to budget your money. You're not like the typical nine to five job where you're getting a um, paycheck probably bi-weekly and you know exactly how much you're gonna get as long as you work those hours or if you're not hourly you know you have a salary and you know you're gonna get that money you have to know how to budget because you're getting a chunk of change and you have to know how to budget that over a period of time because you don't know when your next paycheck's gonna be so you really have to balance your money and I think that that could be really overwhelming for people and to speak with an accountant to get you on the right track and to get you started in the right direction is a really good idea. Um, especially if you're, you're new to having your own business or being an entrepreneur or, you know, having to be taxes like this, it's definitely something that I would do first. Um, it's something that I was told by many people. So I'm thankful for that. So if you don't have someone telling you that you should talk to an accountant, here I am and I'm telling you, you should talk to an accountant or someone to help you with finance, finances, taxes, th things like that. All right, so next is attend open houses. You know, maybe in your area, you don't have too many open houses because of COVID, but if there are, I definitely suggest that you go and you shadow people for open houses, kind of going along with the last one. Go to open houses shadow people, see how they do it. Maybe ask people that have listings. Maybe you don't have listings yet. Chances are you probably don't have listings yet. You're a brand new agent. So ask other agents in the office that may have several listings and can't go and do open houses for all of them if they would allow you to do an open house on their listing. This is a great way to meet buyers and get buyer leads. People are coming in, they may not have an agent and maybe this isn't the house for them, but you could take down their information and try to find them another house. So I think a great place to meet new buyer clients is at, is at open houses. And I think this probably works better than cold calls or getting leads from online because you're actually having a face-to-face -face interaction with them right off the bat and you can actually kind of build up rapport with them and get to know them and see that you're a good fit or not right off the bat. And there's no really time that you're taking out of your day individually to meet with these people. You're kind of just all in this time that you already set aside for this open house. So I think that definitely take advantage of open houses. You don't have your own listings. Try to find agents that do and see if they will allow you to do an open house for them, come along with you on an come along with them on an open house. I just think that it's something that you definitely do. And if you're not, then you're missing out on an opportunity to get a lot of buyer leads. And those buyer leads may have to sell a house. So you can get buyer leads and seller leads. Or even maybe you could get a neighbor down the street who saw that you are listing this house or your coworkers listing this house and they wanna know how much their house is worth. Bam, right there. Now you have a potential seller client, seller lead that can be a client and you can sell their house down the street. All of these things are possible. So definitely get yourself out there, start meeting people. That's the only way you're gonna do it. All right, so my camera died. So sorry if this angle is a little bit different. But the next thing that you're gonna want to do is to really get to know your market. Because I guarantee you the first thing that people are gonna ask you when they know you're an agent is they're gonna ask you, how's the market? And you're gonna to wanna to have an answer besides it's really hot. So you definitely wanna do some market reports of the areas that you're serving. See how many, how many houses have sold 
see how much over asking they've sold for, how long houses that have been on the market. You know, you really want to get a feel for what's happening, happening, the activity, because these people are asking because maybe they're thinking, hey, like I want to buy or maybe I want to sell. But I don't know how the market is. I've heard rumors that it's crazy. Maybe they're scared. And if you give them the hard, cold facts, you can't fight with that. You know, you may think it's crazy, but the next person may think it's not crazy. But definitely get familiar with your market, how much houses are going for, how quickly they're selling. You know, you have to know numbers, you have to know your facts, and people are going to ask you. So definitely have an answer prepped and ready to go for when people come up to you and ask that question or any question about the neighborhoods or just the areas you serve in general. You're gonna to wanna to have a question, an answer to their question because a lot of people will ask you that. And I know that because they've asked me, how's the market so many times. People are just curious. So definitely have an answer prep for that and know your market, know the areas you serve inside and out so that you look like an expert and really knowledgeable in the field. All right, so the next thing is to make a schedule. So real estate is really, unpredictable so you definitely want to set a schedule for yourself because like any other nine to five you're gonna have you know you have to be here you have to come in at nine you have to leave at five or you have to come in at eight and you leave at four whatever the case may be and you have this many hours to do such and such and then you have your maybe your lunch break and then you do this for the rest of the day you kind of have a set schedule kind of like an outline of what your day should look like but when you're a real estate agent you kind of have to do that all on your own and it's really easy to get distracted and get into other things, other aspects of your life and kind of forget about the task at hand. So I would definitely sit down and think of a schedule that works for you. So for example, maybe you spend from eight to 11, you do cold calls or from eight to 11, you look and get familiar with the market and look at how, like what's sold and what new listings are up or whatever the case may be. And then maybe, you know, in the middle of the day, you're going to have lunch, but maybe you're gonna go out and you're gonna meet up with business owners or send out, you know, gifts to your past clients. And then maybe at the end of the day, that's when you have all of your, your um, showings because people usually tend to have showings at the end of the day because everyone, everyone works and a lot of people like to have showings later at night or at the end of the day when they get home from work. So maybe you, kind of do your administrative stuff at the beginning of the day, set aside time for your lunch, time for yourself, and then maybe you do showings at the end of the day. So definitely think of a plan. Maybe it's not so like structured from one hour to the next, but a general idea of the things that you will do. And you know, remember to schedule time for yourself too, because that's also hard because you get so caught up in the things and you're just like working nonstop and nonstop and nonstop. And while you know you want to work and stay active, and uh, the more you work, the more money you get, but you definitely want to set aside time for yourself so you don't get really burnt out because that is something that definitely happens in the real estate market, especially when you have those days where things aren't going so well. You get burnt out and you have to schedule time in your schedule for you, whether that be during the week, during the month, or a daily thing that you do. You go and you exercise from this time to that time. Just have a schedule. Don't go into every day. Like, I don't know what today is gonna bring. I mean, it does happen in real estate because, you know, maybe someone is gonna call you up and wanna see a new listing that come in the market, or, you know, something happened at one of your listings and you're like, oh my goodness, like I have to go and fix this problem. Like, you're gonna have to adjust it here and there, but have a daily schedule so you're not just like thinking like in the morning oh I could do this I could do that I could do this I could do that what should I start with next or first and then you know you just want to have a brief overview and outline of what you're gonna do or you're just gonna spend time thinking about what you're gonna do and not do it at all and like making to-do lists oh that reminds me of another thing so I also think that it's great to sit down at the end of every day and think of a to-do list for the next day so instead of thinking about it at the beginning of a day Think about it the day ahead so that you have a schedule right in front of you of things you have to do that day so that you have it already planned. You don't have to take that time out of your day to think about all those things. You just have it and you know what you have to do each day and you have it right in front of you and you're ready to go. Okay, so the last thing is to know your contracts. So definitely know your contracts, review them, ask questions. If you don't know what something means, your clients are gonna ask this because they're not contracts they see every day. You know, the average person isn't dealing with contracts and if they are, maybe they're not dealing with real estate contracts every day. 
and they want to know what they're signing. Contracts are overwhelming and they're scary and they have wording that doesn't make sense to a lot of people or phrases that, you know, don't mean anything to people. So, you know, when someone asks you, what does this mean? They want to know what they're signing and you better know what it means. <laughs> you don't want to get yourself in trouble either if you don't know what people are signing and they're signing it and you're leading them to disaster or to get in trouble. So I would definitely go over contracts. Um, I would definitely do it with your broker or someone that has been in the business a long time to kind of go over what everything means and why people are signing and just understand what you're, you're having people sign because if they have any questions, you definitely want to know the answers to them to make people feel comfortable. You want to seem knowledgeable because if you're handing someone these contracts to basically sign over their life, to put an offer for this house, you're going to want to know what they mean. They're going to want to know that you know what they mean and have confidence in you as well. So definitely review your contracts, know what they all mean, you know, make sure that you know what you can be held liable for and what protect your clients. Because if there's deadlines for things, you definitely want to make sure you know what those mean and what they are so that you don't go out of contract and possibly lose money for your clients, lose the house for your clients. You don't want to be in that position. So definitely know what people are signing and stay on, on top of the dates and know your timelines. It's just, you just need to know your contracts, people. Just know your forms, know your contracts. Trust me, you're going to be really overwhelmed and stressed out if you're signing things, having people sign things that you don't even know what they mean. So definitely, definitely review contracts, sit down with someone that knows them very well and ask any questions that you may have about them. All right guys, so that is it. Those are things that I would do right now. Start right now if you are a new agent. This is your starting ground. This is, you're at the gates. This is what you have to do first. I would definitely go through all of these things and you will find success and you will be on the track to do really well in real estate. If you have any other things that you would like to add to this, maybe things that you think that are important to do right off the bat, leave them in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.